Hello, this is Lisa Fagan Davis coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts. I have just received a new acquisition for my very small uh, collection of manuscript fragments and I'm going to unbox it and share it with you because I want you to know why I'm so excited about this particular acquisition. I'm going to use it for teaching and I really think it's going to be uh, a really good object for teaching fragments and fragmentology and paleography. So let's get started. So I already opened it, opened the box. Here it is, all nice and cozy in bubble wrap. I bought this from a, uh, a book dealer in England who was recommended to me by a collector whom I know quite well. And uh, it's a binding fragment, so we don't need to worry about uh, whether a book was, a manuscript was destroyed and when uh, in order to create this. We know that this happened a very long time ago. Um, because as if you have listened, uh, heard me or anyone else talk about manuscript fragments, you will know that it was quite common in the late Middle Ages and even into the early modern period for uh, owners and bookbinders in particular to take old parchment and reuse it as part of their binding, uh, part of book bindings. Because you need, uh, you need parchment to serve all sorts of different um, functions in a medieval binding or early modern binding, a paste down, a spine liner, a fly leaf, or even fold it around to create the cover. And so that's what this object is. Here it is. Ah, I love it so much. So there's a lot to love about this. So first of all, I'm gonna zoom it in here so you can see the script. It's a beautiful 12th century glossed Bible. So it had from France. So it's a beautiful example of 12th century French script. Um, but it also is an example of the innovation in the formatting and the function of medieval Bibles as we move into the 12th century. Uh, so you can see that it's formatted with a lot of space between the lines, and that's so that someone can add this interlinear commentary uh, and definitions of words and so on. And then here in the margins, we have the primary uh, biblical glossing, presumably the Glossa Ordinaria, but uh, I haven't had a chance to look closely at it yet. Uh, and so you can also see that this was originally two conjoint leaves, so that it makes a, a bifolium. It was folded originally like this. I can do this because it's mine. So uh, originally it would have looked like this. And then you open it up and then you can read on to the next, and then this is the conjoint folio. Uh, I checked already, these two uh, leaves are not consecutive, even though they are conjoint. There would have been other bifolia nested in between separating them. And one of the things that I want to do, or perhaps I will have my students do, is try and calculate how many leaves are missing in between by looking at the text and seeing how much text is missing. This, by the way, is from the book of Matthew, chapters 24 and chapter 25. Uh, and then, so that's just the first part. So beautiful French glossed Bible, written in Latin, but from France. But now, what? What's with these holes? This is what I was super excited about. So if you rotate it this way, you can actually see pretty clearly what's, what's going on here. This was used as a paste down inside the cover of a, an early modern binding. And I know that for several reasons. First of all, you can see that it's been trimmed to a very particular size. And these five holes represent the nails that held the decorative bosses, metal decorations on the cover of the book in which this was used as a fragment. And so when the book was, when the leaf was removed from the binding in which it was used as a fragment, these holes were left, uh, were left behind. And that pattern of five holes is quite distinctive and it's what you find in a, uh, made like a 15th or 16th century binding. 
In addition, you can also see right here, there's a fold right here. Can you see that? If I zoom in, can we see that? Yeah, there we go. So there's a fold right there. And so this was uh, sewn in to the binding in which it was used as a flyleaf. So it would have laid inside the cover and this tab would have gone around the first choir of the book that it was binding, whether it was a, um, a manuscript or a printed book. And then this tab would have protruded on the other side of the choir. There's the tab. Then finally, when this was removed from the binding in which it was used as a paste down, in addition to these holes, somebody had to cut through the sewing on this tab in order to remove it. So we have so much evidence preserved on this sad little piece of parchment. We've got the original biblical text with its conjoint leaf that's been trimmed. So we gotta figure out, that's task number one, how many leaves are missing in between. We've got to identify what gloss this is, if it's the Glossa Ordinaria or something else. Then, so we, and we can see the, the sewing holes from the original sewing. Then we've also got this evidence of how it was used in a later binding and the signs of it being removed from that binding to be sold off separately. So we can read its whole history just from looking at the material evidence on this lovely uh, fragment. So this is LFD fragment number 10 from now on in my, in my little growing hand list of fragments. I can't wait to show it to my students. And um, thank you for sharing it with me.